Spirit minor driver who killed two 12-year-old girls comes face to face with justice. What happened right now? Bishop Elisha Salifu Amwako's son earlier today came face to face with the gravity of his offenses when he appeared before a juvenile court in the last few hours. The 16-year-old son of the founder of General founder and general overseer of a life chapel international appeared on four charges, including manslaughter for the killing of two 12-year-old girls when the car he was driving without license crashed into another vehicle. Tonight, the younger Mwako will spend some time in state custody pending his rearrangement on November 7. The questions are there, I know. What are the charges? What could the pursuit of justice look like with a minor involved? I tell you. Well, not me. Dennis Poiberi, my producer and lawyer, has been studying the documents the police released in the last few hours of the night to help us answer some of these questions. Dennis, good evening to you. Good evening, Cam. Well, anyway. Yes, so um, the police... Four are... charges, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. So let's start with the charges, actually, mm -hmm. uh, before we come to the updates that the police have been giving us. So these are the charges that have been leveled against the... The minor, the young man. Right. Um, one is manslaughter, contrary to section 50 of the Criminal Offences Act, Act 29. Neg negligently causing harm, contrary to section 72 of the Criminal Offences Act. Um, dangerous driving, contrary to section 11C and D of the Road Traffic um, Act 2004. And then driving without a license, contrary to section 531 of the Road Traffic um, Act 2004. So beyond this, which we have gleaned from the charge sheet, mm. the police have also been giving us an update as to what has become of the young man now. And they say the 16-year-old um, suspect driver involved in the fatal East Legon accident, which occurred on October 12th, claiming lives of two people, has been remanded into custody by the Accra Juvenile and Family Court. What is of importance is this, the fact that the suspect was put before court today, 1st November. Now, this is important because... When you look at um, juvenile offenses right. and the procedure that is adopted in dealing with such cases, it's quite different. And of course, the juvenile offenses, um, the Juvenile Justice Act specifically says that um, juveniles should be handled differently from adults. Absolutely. This day is important because what it means is that time begins to run with respect to the trial. Mm. So that if after six months they are unable to complete the case or that unable to dispose of the case, it means that the offender or the accused person in this case would have to be discharged. Which means that and the, he cannot the, be arrested on the same set of facts. I see. Which means that the police is racing against time right now. Yes. So prosecution actually is racing against time and not just prosecution. The courts too would also have to play a I part see. in all of this. Which but means, this is very important. Indeed. Which means also that, you know, the wheel of justice cannot be grinding as slow as we, not we in usually this particular not, not in this particular case. Not and at all. When does the six months start to count? So it's, it begins from the first time the accused person or the suspect in this case, there is crime as a suspect. Now he's been officially charged, so he becomes an accused person. Um, that's 1st November. On the so this is the first is time today. he's been put before court. Mm. Six, six months from now, six the months case now should have should concluded. Be completed. Else he has to be discharged. I see. And, and, and then also, you, you know, you explained earlier to me the constitution of the court that c can hear this case yes. involving a minor. Talk to us about that. So a juvenile court basically is, 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 is composed differently. So you have a magistrate and then two other persons, one of whom must be a social uh, welfare officer. And then the other person will be someone who is above 25 years of age. Those mm. people are appointed by the chief justice um, on the recommendation of the director of the social welfare. So that's panel, if I may put it that way, would be those to look into that particular matter. Mm. So when you come to matters that have to do with juveniles, it's quite a sensitive matter because the law requires that they should be dealt with in a special way. One is because the, so the law expressly states that the welfare of the juvenile should be of paramount interest to anybody who is dealing with them. Right. And that is because they want them to be protected. That, um, I mean, they are still um, children in the eyes of the law. This person, we are told, is 16 years. Mm -hmm. You would even realize that even within the range of um, juveniles or young or, or people who fall below 18, you have those who fall below 16. They are treated differently. Right. There are those who are 16 but less than 18, and there are the young offenders who are 18, uh, more than 18 and less than 21. Mm. However, there are also things and that um, 
may be of interest when it comes to juvenile justice. Right. Now, there are certain punishments that cannot be attributed to a juvenile. And I keep using a juvenile because a juvenile simply means a young offender. And, and, this, and this is despite the gravity of the offense? Yes. However, there are other exceptions, but we'll see if this would fall under any of the exceptions. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, when you look at Section 32 of the uh, Juvenile Justice Act, it talks about prohibition of certain forms of punishment. It says that a juvenile offender shall not be sentenced to imprisonment by a juvenile court or a court of um, summary jurisdiction. So what it means is that generally you cannot sentence a juvenile to imprisonment. You can see. only be sentenced to detention. Mm. Which, which is usually the Boston homes? Yes, it used to be Boston homes. Now we call them correctional, correctional centers, centers, either junior indeed. or senior correctional centers, indeed. depending on the age. Indeed. The other thing is that a death sentence shall not be pronounced or even recorded against a juvenile offender. This is the case where the penalty of the offense ordinarily should have been death. But this would not apply in the case that we are dealing with. Now, the exception created is that where it is a serious offense, because the law... The law ad acknowledges that not all offenses are the same. Mm -hmm. So when it's a serious offense, then it treats them differently. Right. Now, these are the serious offenses that have been listed. Murder, rape, defilement, indecent assault involving unlawful arms, um, robbery with aggravated circumstances, drug offenses, and offenses related to firearms. Well, I, I don't see manslaughter or, or driving yes. without authorization. So it means that... The case we are dealing with does not fall under the category of serious offenses. Based on the law. Based on the law. That's what the law says. And basically, that's, um, yes. And now, so when this person is detained, mind you, when they're using detention here, when you imagine it in the terms of the regular trials, this ordinarily should have been the sentencing or if like imprisonment. Mm. So when they're detaining juveniles, that where a juvenile or young offender is ordered to be sent to a centre, the detention order shall be the authority for the detention and the period shall not exceed. Now pay attention to this one. Mm -hmm. Three months for a juvenile offender under the age of 16. Mm -hmm. But we are dealing with somebody who is 16. Who is 16. Let's see what the law says about that. That six months for a juvenile offender or, I mean off, or above 16 years, but under 18 years. Mm. The suspect we are dealing with, or the accused now, as we are dealing with falls under this age range. Mm -hmm. So, per the law, he could only do six months. Right. That out of 24 for a young offender, and a young offender, like I explained earlier, is someone who is above 18 years and below 21 years. Mm -hmm. Three years for a serious offense. I showed you the serious offenses. What it means is that if we are dealing with somebody who mm -hmm. had committed a serious offense, that person could go as high as three years for a serious offense. I see. We do not see that the person in question here is dealing with, I mean, mm. comes under the serious offenses. So we can only limit ourselves to this particular one. Could, you know, prosecution decide to try uh, the accused person as an adult in any case at all? Is, it, is that permissible in our law? Yes, it's permissible under exceptional circumstances again. And there's a typical example of what we just dealt with in the Kaswa case, mm -hmm. where there were two charged together. The other one was an adult, the other was a minor. Mm -hmm. In such an instance, they would try the two of them as though they were adults. However, when it comes to sentencing, and that's how when we came to the Kaswa case, the day they were convicted, only the adult was sentenced. Mm -hmm. They had to remit the juvenile to the juvenile court for them to do the sentencing. And when they are doing the sentences, I mean the sentencing, they come back to the, the detention I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. six, um, three months for 60, 16, less than 18, right, and all right. that range. So yes. And this is the part I was talking about, expeditious hearing, that mm -hmm. the case of a juvenile charged with an offence before a juvenile court shall be dealt with expeditiously. And if the case is not completed within six months of the juvenile's first appearance in court, first appearance in court is today, the juvenile shall be discharged and is not liable for any further proceedings in respect of the same offences. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be said about juvenile justice. I, absolutely. It's a special it's area and a delicate area for that much absolutely. matter. Absolutely. Uh, but let's leave it at this. Indeed, we will. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, Dennis Poberi is my producer here on Ghana Tonight. He's been sharing details of what the pursuit of justice could look like uh, for, these young, uh, for, for this young man uh, whose actions led to the deaths of two 12-year-old girls.
is explained to us why this trial needs to move fast because based on the law that uh, surrounds juvenile prosecution, uh, the constituted court or prosecution needs to be done within a period of six months for the age range of the accused person in question. Tonight we know that uh, when the case was called in juvenile court, uh, the court decided that the young man should be taken to Junior Correctional Center uh, to, to await his rearrangement on November 7, which is where uh, we'll bring you more details uh, when he reappears in juvenile court again. But that's it for that uh, story.